In this video, I'd like to demonstrate my automatic weed harvesting system. What makes mine a little different than ones you may have seen before is that housed within this mound here is Minecraft's very first floodgate system. It was designed by ZOM13 in the Minecraft forums, and I thought what better way to use a floodgate system than in a Minecraft wheat farm, because wheat farms and water go so well together. Is that right, Tiger? Yeah, yeah. So, um, this is my greenhouse. Got the plants all ready to go, ready to be harvested. And we'll go down here into our control room and I'll show you how it works. So, these right here are indicator lights. I'll uh, get to them a little later. For right now, the only important thing we need to know is floodgates lit, it's open, floodgates dark, it's closed. So, we pull this switch here, light goes on, we uh, take a look back up here. And if we wait just a second, there it comes. And the flood starts. Plop, 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 plop goes the wheat. Plop, 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 plop. And the wheat slowly makes its way down the wheat farm until it falls into these troughs right here. And these troughs then whisk the wheat this way until it collects right here. And after it collects right here, it just moves its way down here until it gets to the very end it drops into my collection tray. And uh, this might take a little bit of time, so I'll kill a pig. Get out of here, pig. And I'll just let this uh, fast forward for a bit. Alright, so all of our wheat is collected, so pop, and there we go, one, two, three and a half stacks of uh, wheat. Now that the harvesting is all done, we just click the lever, it goes dark, means the floodgates have been closed, and we just go up here and take a look, we have the uh, couple of stray errant pieces of wheat, and there we go, look, water turns off. No need for reset blocks or any of that stuff. Just pull the switch, water goes on. Pull the switch, water goes off. It's a pretty nice little device. Is that right, Mr. Pig? Oh yeah, he's impressed. Jumped off a building, he was so impressed. Alright, so let me go uh, show you my other little addition I added. This corner here is a minecart storage. And I just can plop my weed in here. I just collected, like so. Push the button here. The booster comes up and whisks it away. And this cart will head off that way into the sunset, goes towards my base. Oh, hello. No wheat for you. That was close. Anyways, it heads off to my base in that direction and heads to my kitchen where I can deposit the wheat in my refrigerator. Now over at my super secret underground kitchen, we have the minecart waiting for us here with all the wheat we sent over. We can just collect this. I'll collect a little right now. We can just put it in the refrigerator and we can click the button to send the minecart back to the greenhouse. Oh, there he goes. Um, I really like that because it means I don't have to worry about bringing it back here manually. I can just load it up, send it over, and it's ready for me to unpack whenever I need to. Also means I can send tools and equipment back to the greenhouse in case everyone's low on uh, flowers or anything such as that. Now that I've shown you what it does, let me show you how it does it. This is a rather unique set of equipment that was developed to make the water turn on and off. Normally, for automatic wheat farms, you just have a block of water and a redstone wire just updates the water to fall down a different path. The problem with that is you have to reset it every time. What this does is it's a bit more complicated, but it lets you turn it on and off. So what we have here is the water source. Let me go show you. And it's being held back by this piece of gravel here. Down here, supporting this column of gravel is a boat and this boat is stuck in this little area between this boat here and this door. What happens when you pull that switch 
is it goes through a set of circuitry, comes up here, and activates this door for just a really quick fraction of a second. What this does is allow the boat to jump up the water stream temporarily and then jump back down. And this small tiny gap time allows one block of gravel to fall down, go through a hole, and since it's one gravel shorter, this clears this up so the water can flow on out and go cover the fields. So that's how the water goes out when you pull the switch. Now, the bigger question is how does it stop? You just go right up here to the next level, and as you can see we have the exact same setup here. You have a pillar of gravel supported over a boat with uh, redstone wiring connected to a door. And like before, when you pull the switch, this time, if the water's flowing, this door is going to open, the boat's going to move, a block of gravel is going to fall down, and it's going to fall down and land on the uh, gravel that's down there holding, and it will, it will start to hold the water back. And that's how it works. Now, if you remember, in my uh, control room, I had two indicator lights, a low sand warning and a critical sand levels indicator. Um, I wrote sand, I'm using gravel, but that's the uh, same thing, pretty much. What it is, is this is a redstone torch right here providing power that gets inserted into this block. And this block transmits the power through itself to a redstone wire here, which then goes down this uh, path. As long as there is a block right here, then this path will stay lit. However, if there is no sand here, it runs out, then this pathway gets interrupted. This light turns off, or this path turns off, which way down at the end of the road, way back down at my base, is going to turn the light on. And the same thing up here, I have another one, you can see it. That's the low sand indicator, which tells you you're almost out of sand. This tells you you're out of sand. I've also uh, connected this pathway here to my circuitry way down here in the bowels of the mechanism. And what it pretty much does is it creates an override to the mechanism that says, oh gosh, we're out of sand, don't try to uh, start or stop the water because if you do, it's going to break everything. So that's what that does. And the last light was my maintenance override indicator. And I just have this in because what it does, turn it on, it supplies power here perpetually to this system so that in case this ever gets interrupted, this is the uh, path back to the switch by the way, in case this ever gets interrupted or something happens while I'm working on the farm, water washes out circuitry, I accidentally remove a torch or something, it doesn't make the water flow and stop and break all sorts of junk. So this is just my maintenance override. So when it's on, I can do all sorts of stuff out there and nothing will work. So let's just turn that back off now. And that's that. Pretty much what it does is you pull the switch, it sends a, it turns this off, which sends a quick pulse, depending on whether you have water flowing or not to this one or this one. That quick pulse will then travel either up this column right here with this ladder, or travel up this column of ladders, and just go up to those doors by the boats depending on, once again, if there is uh, water flowing or not. And just like with the sand indicator, the, don't, this just determines if there is a piece of gravel here or not blocking the water. That determines whether to flip the water on or off. And that's uh, basically how it works. And all that culminates in the water just pouring right out of here, covering this whole area and depositing whatever's on here into these benches. Isn't it right, Tiger? Yep. See? Tiger knows. He's a good boy. So let's have one last quick demonstration. Click. We open the floodgates. Takes a sec for the water to flow down all the switchbacks, and there it comes. And if you notice, it 
just reaches the end here. Just barely. So everything drops into this water troughs. And then we collect all the items and it's as simple as switching the flip right back off. And there you go. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. I enjoyed making it. If you, uh, if I get enough people asking for maybe a little more description on how it's made, maybe some tutorials or walkthrough, um, I'll uh, think about doing that. So just uh, leave comments or whatever you'd like. To, uh, just tell me, and if I get enough interest, I will work on that for you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got some good ideas from it. And once again, I'd like to thank the creator of this water gate because without it, it would just be another automatic farm. Have a good day and enjoy your Minecraft.